Before we get started, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Jason Wilkinson with Prodigy Homes. Um, I've been building homes for going on 21 years now. Um, I personally constructed over 450 homes. Actually, this year it's looking more like it's getting up to 500 homes. Um, worked with a huge national builder um, to accumulate a lot of those homes. So um, what I want to talk about today is just kind of give everybody a different aspect or a different look on how homes are built. Okay? Um, and just to gauge the room a little bit, has anybody in here ever built a new home before? You have? You have, have, you, have you guys built them yourself or did you hire a builder to do those? I built two. You built two yourself? Well, great, great. How about you? Gotcha. And that'll go into a little bit of the talk too. There's, I would not do that again. <laughs> there's many, many, many ways to build a home. You could do it yourself. I wouldn't recommend it, but you can. Um, it's, it's an entire job all in itself. Um, <clears throat> so uh, how many here live in a home? Okay, everybody lives in a home. Um, so your home, actually, the way I look at it, the way I, I, whenever I'm building the house, I look at it, is your house is actually alive. It's funny to kind of think about that, but it's got a skeleton, all the framing members and everything. It's got all the guts inside. It's got your plumbing. You know, that's all your digestive system. It's got your HVAC, your breathing, your, um, you know, uh, your brain functions in there, all the electrical, you know, side of things. Um, and you actually need to treat your house as if it is that way too. Give it regular checkups, check on it, you know, during um, like twice a year maintenance programs with HVAC companies and plumbing companies and things like that. Um, another way to look at, uh, look at your home is that uh, it's, it's a giant 3D puzzle that, that is constructed, it's put together. It doesn't come in a box. There's, I mean, it's got like a 2D piece of black and white paper that you look at and then you go, okay, here's the 3D puzzle that we're, that we're going to construct. Not only that, but it's a 3D puzzle that you live in. It's got a function and it's got to look really cool, right? It's got to look nice and things like that. So um, does there anybody have any idea of how many parts and pieces go into a home? Like, just take a guess. Counting every nut, bolt, screw, piece of sheetrock shingle no guess how about you you got a guess it's 1.4 million parts and pieces so and that was done by a study uh, by dr horton who's the largest residential construction company on basically the planet um, and so they build a lot of homes every year i'll get into that in a little bit um, so they were able to calculate out how ma how much and not only that there's individual puzzles that are inside that big 3D puzzle, like your cabinet set. Your cabinets, there's an average of about 50 pieces in each cabinet, and then there's an average of about 50 cabinets in your house. That's a larger home. But it just goes to show you that there's so many parts and moving pieces. And on top of that, there's an average of about 50 companies that come together to construct this 3D puzzle. So I would be the one that's coordinating the timing and everything that's coming in there, but you have all the way from the guy that drops off the porta potty out in the front. And that's, that's a pretty integral part of building a house. People don't realize that, but starting from that, going all the way um, to the guy that makes the keys. You know? um, so those 50 companies have an average of about 10 people per company. It's 500 people, 1,000 human hands, coming together to build a 1.4 million part and piece 3D puzzle that has to function and look pretty. <laughs> and, you know, um, most of the time, buyers, it's, it's their largest investment they've ever made. So um, whether it's a $150,000 home or it's a $1.5 million home, the buyer feels the same way, and we treat them the same way, that everything's got to be right everything's got to be nice and functional at the end so um, this <laughs> this 1.4 million part and piece puzzle constructed by thousand human hands um, it it's done in such a way that um, you know like any puzzle here 
for example. Like any puzzle, it has what we builders refer to as a recipe. So you got a puzzle here. So the recipe is an algorithm. So does anybody know what an algorithm is? You probably you're computer tech, right? You know what an algorithm is? It's the certain steps to anything. There's an algorithm on how to make a grilled cheese sandwich, right? You can't, you can't put the bread and the cheese. I mean, there's a certain way you got to do it, right? You got to start here, next step, next step, next step, next step. So, like I said, the algorithm, like this right here is child's play compared to um, building a home, but it's the same thing. It's, it's a puzzle. So if you know how the puzzle works, you can, you can figure it out. So um, that recipe, each builder has their own recipe. Um, and there's different styles of homes to choose from. So um, what I mean by different styles of homes is you have, put that there, you have um, production building homes, which let's say it's, a, it's on a sliding scale. So if production builders are over here and custom builders are over there against the wall, I'm what you would call a semi-custom. So I'm kind of in the middle. So. We have our own floor plans that you can kind of modify and change, and we have a lot of color selections to choose from. Um, I also would say we're kind of a high-end production builder, you know, because it's, it's more on the luxury scale of things that we do. Um, and on this total end on the side over here, for custom builds, you get to pick anything you want, however you want it. It's your floor plan. It's a one-off. Nobody's going to build this plan again. Um, and that doesn't mean that it has to be a super luxury, multi-million dollar home. It just means it's one off. You hired a contractor to build it specifically for that. Now on this scale over here, say Deal Horton that I told you about. Do you want to take a wild guess on how many homes they built last year? It, it blew me away. So I, 40,000, 40, no, God, no. There wasn't 40,000 homes built in Tri-Cities in the last 20 years. Yeah. What's the average of 1,200? Yeah, roughly. Something like that per year that Tri-Cities does. Um, so 40,000 homes, I did the math. If they put it on a 100-foot wide lot and built them on one side of the street, like made a, let's say, Deer Horton uh, Highway, at 60 miles an hour, it would take you 11 hours to pass them all. Wow. Wow. So these guys don't change anything. If you wanted to change a swing on a door, they'd be like, nope. <laughs> Next. Um, then you've got other production builders. Like the ones here in town that you're going to hear of are like Ajo or Hayden Homes. They're, they're, they're production home builders. So they have about 12 to 15 different floor plans. Those are the floor plans they build. They really don't modify them. They let you pick A, B, or C selections in there. They're really nice homes. Um, and then you have, like I said, somewhere in the middle would be where I live, where you can come in. Um, we've got about 12 to 15 different floor plans. Um, now we got more because we modify it, and then that's, it's a new plan. It's the Beethoven II or the, you know, it's a modified version of that. So um, it's all about kind of tailor fitting our house to what you would need, whether it's, uh, you know, you've got a mother-in-law's quarters that you need. So we can add on to the back of it, maybe put a, a, a suited bedroom with a little kitchenette or something in there for you, um, that sort of thing. Um, and like I said, on the other end of the scale would be the true custom home builders that they don't build anything twice. Hey, they just build the same thing. Hey, Gage, how you doing? <laughs> so um, on this end of the scale, like I said, you can, you can do anything you want. Now the price is going to go up a little bit, <laughs> you know, because it's a one-off. The guys that um, down at that end of the scale, they know exactly what that house cost them, down to the penny, and they watch market analysis on lumber going up or materials going up, so they they adjust the pricing of their houses for that. Um, over there at that end of the scale, he basically tells you it's a cost plus job, so. Uh, whatever the house costs, it'll cost plus 15% would be the builder markup on it. So if the house costs you $100,000, he would make $15,000 building that house. There's no house that's costing $100,000, right, Vicki? Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. Um, so that's kind of the, 
kind of the scale on production building versus custom in building. Now, um, building the house yourself. So, that could get a bit tricky. A lot of people come to me and they say, well, we're thinking about just building it ourselves. So, you know, I don't know if the numbers you're gonna, are going to work out. I can probably get it done cheaper. It's probably not the case um, because as I'm building a home, I have contractors, you know, I build about 30 homes per year is on, on, on average there. So my contractors, year after year, I build 30 homes. So they give me a decent break on product, labor, you know, everything that goes into the home that they wouldn't necessarily give to an average um, person that's going to build their own house. Matter of fact, sometimes those guys may mark it up a little bit because they know it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard to get in their time frame window that they want, that all the materials are going to be there. Everything's going to be ready. Nobody else is going to be on top of them like another contractor trying to do the plumbing or so what I do is I give them ample time, ample, you know, uh, information on what needs to be done. And then I give them an ample window on when to get it done. And I let them know that they need to be done by that time because the next guy is going to be behind them. So the contractors we work with love working for us because they know, they know exactly what they need to do, where they need to be and what needs to be done. And that there's not going to be anybody else on top of them. So getting back to what I was saying that sometimes the, the subcontractors and suppliers will mark it up a little bit. So instead of being at a regular price, I get maybe a 10 or 15% break on it. They may add 10 or 15% on the tail of it, knowing that they might have to make multiple trips back to that home because, hey, it wasn't ready, all the material wasn't there, that kind of thing. So I don't make 15%. So if that tells you anything. 10% is a great day for me, if I make, which I don't, I usually don't make that either. So if I'm getting a 15% break, I'm only making 10% on top of it, whereas you're not getting that 15% break, and you're having to do all the work yourself anyway, and it may take you twice as long as it takes me, um, because I've got that algorithm down. I've got that recipe down. Um, so building your own home, I would advise against it, but then again, I can't. It's kind of like, you know, if I had to have appendix surgery, I'm not going to lay on the table myself and try it with a mirror. I'm, I'm not going to do that. Even though I've done lots of Googling on it and I know how it's done. Um, same thing with a lawyer. I'm not going to go represent myself in court because I'm just going to leave that to the, to the professionals. Um, so I'm not trying to per se talk you out of building the house yourself. I'm just giving you some information that if you can get in contact with a good builder, they can get that house built for you in a timely manner and at a decent price rather than trying to, to build that yourself. Um, hold on just a second. Now it's dry. So the recipe, I'm not going to get into all the minutia of the home building process. I'll touch on what we call milestones of building a home. So um, the milestones are going to have like hundreds of things between these milestones that, that you would need to, well, you wouldn't need to do it unless you were, in, if you're building your own house, you would need to know these. But um, number one is going to be your foundation stage. You know, you're going to want to get your foundation in. Now, in order to do that, you have to do excavation, a lot of, you know, plugging in all the utility lines, things like that. Um, so that's one of the milestones is getting the foundation poured. The next milestone would be um, framing. So starting framing. Coordinate the lumber drop, get the framing package out there, um, line up the framers and what they need to do, any changes that need to be made. And I kind of skipped the first one, actually, which, which would be permitting. So depending on where you're at, um, di di different jurisdictions, like here in the Tri-Cities, it's crazy because you've got, if you're going to build in Pasco, you need to permit with Pasco. Same thing with Kennewick, Richland, West Richland. If it's out in the county, it needs to be Benton County or Franklin County. So, and every one of them is a little bit different. They, they require certain things. And that's another thing as a builder, the builder's going to know exactly what they want and they're going to get it to them in a timely manner rather than trying to 
fumble your way through uh, that permitting process. It, it, it takes a while. When I first moved up here 16 years ago, um, like I said, each area is different. So it, had, it was a little learning curve on trying to figure out exactly what they wanted. So you go from permitting to foundation, foundation to framing. So, um, and framing, once the framing goes on, the trusses go on, roof, roof gets in, windows get put on, and that's what we call the house being dried in. It means it's basically protected from the weather. Once that goes on, we have um, the rough ends. So that's when they do all your roughing in of the plumbing, HVAC, electrical, security, or, or low voltage wiring if you need to do that. Um, and a, a good way I put it is PACE, the word PACE. It's plumbing, AC, and electric. So it needs to go in that order in the, in the algorithm, in the, the kind of recipe to build. So after you get all your rough ends done, um, that's basically the midway point of the house. So you have a front end of the build and you have a back end of the build. And they're, they're like two different animals. A lot of the big builders actually will take and have um, front end construction managers where they pass the house to the guy that's on the back end. So, and that's pretty, it works pretty well for those guys. But the thing is, is, you know, that's not a true full builder. It's somebody that can just do the front end and just do the back end. So like I said, after the rough ends go in, it's dried in, um, all the plumbing lines are ran, HVAC lines are ran. Um, it's the midway point, the tipping point of the house from front end to back end. Um, so all of the inspections go through at that point. So the majority of the inspections, I should say, of the home. You have a lot in the beginning as far as the foundation and things like that. And then you have a few at the end, but the majority of them are in the middle where they do all the Plumbing, electrical, HVAC, gas lines, shear inspection, framing inspection. So the majority of the inspections are right there in that midway tipping point. Uh, and then we'll go into the back end where they're delivering drywall, insulating the walls, insulation inspection happens at that point. And these days we have a Energy Star rated homes that we build. So we have to have an Energy Star verifier, third party inspector, come in and verify that the installation's done properly. Uh, and there's so many different things if you're building these days. I mean, you have a, a 2015 energy code standards that we abide by today, which is like this far away from Energy Star. They're, they're, they're energy guidelines that you have to abide by to build homes here. Like I said, they're this far away from Energy Star rating. So we go ahead and go the little extra step, hire the verifier so you can have a Energy Star certified home. Um, but after that's done, hang up the drywall. So now it starts looking more like a home at this point. Um, start doing the drywall and we start doing the exterior of the house. Whether it's the um, siding that goes on or the stucco that goes on. Um, so we start those steps. And this time of year, it's, it's kind of hard to do it right now with all the, all the snow that we got on the ground. Um, so once it takes about two weeks for the, uh, for the drywall to, I mean, it's hung up, takes a couple of days, but then to do what we call tape and float. They come and they finish all the seams up, they texture it, paint the walls, it takes about two weeks to get that done. And within that two weeks, we're delivering all the flooring materials, the trim package, the cabinets, um, which have been ordered out, by the way, a good six weeks ago. You know, the guy comes out, as soon as we're framing, they're measuring the house to field verify that the cabinets are gonna work, trim's gonna work, things like that. Um, so as those things are being delivered, finishing up, that's when we get into all the labor force of installing all that flooring, cabinets, trim. Then they're going to paint the trim. So um, that milestone would be trim, you know, the trim stage of, of the game where they're installing it all, which is funny. My owner of Fine Finish and Floors is right over here. This is the guy we used to, to put in all those cabinets and flooring and trim. Um, after that's done, have it all painted. The countertops have been templated. So there's a guy cutting all the granite and everything off site, brings it out to site um, and installs that. We, uh, we have coming up to what we call our, our trim out stage of the plumbing and it's in the same order, plumbing, HVAC and electrical. They come in and put in all the fixtures and all of the uh, trim work um, as far as the lighting package and the HVAC all the vents and uh, furnaces and kick off the fireplace and it basically starts 
looking more like a uh, more like a home. And then in the end of it, we have what we call a builder punch phase where um, me and my uh, uh, quality control guy will go through the house making a nice long list of all the little things that all the subcontractors either dropped the ball on or didn't do quite right or said that's good enough and walked away. So it's kind of our job to make sure that you know, it's a good quality product. So coming up on the end of the job, um, we have it all cleaned up. It's a construction clean. So we pull off all of the protective paper that's on the floors, wipe everything down, um, get into um, cleaning all the little spots and tubs and, and everything. And then we have what we call a buyer orientation, where I take the buyers room by room. And uh, we, if it's operable, we make sure it's operating. If it needs a little paint touch up, we'll stick some blue tape on there for them. And that's usually about a week to a week and a half before closing. So it gives us a little time to, to button up the house and you know, put a little polish on it and put a bow on it, so to speak, because it's coming up pretty close to being done. And I didn't even mention the outside of the house as far as landscaping and all that kind of stuff. Like I said, there's, there's so many different steps. There's um, what I've got in my, in my algorithm and my uh, recipe. It's about 130 steps that goes in. Now, each one of them requires a lot of different back and forths and verifications and confirmations and things like that as they go along, um, especially things like the cabinets and things, things like that. Um, but to help, to help me out, I say to help me out, I mean, it's not really helping me out. Any builder that builds more than, let's say, five homes a year is going to need some kind of help <laughs> as far as keeping track of all this stuff. People ask me all the time, uh, you know, what color is this supposed to be, or what's that supposed to be, or what's this, or, you know, how am I supposed to do this? I, I, hold on. So I go over here, and I grab my tablet, and I click on this little icon over here. We must be in a bad spot. Oh, no, I still have it on airplane mode. Sorry. <laughs> I just came back from the IBS, the International Builder Show in Las Vegas just yesterday. So it's still on there. No, give me a second. Got to love technology. So I click on Builder Trend. So here's all the jobs I have right now that are going. So I can click on any one of these jobs. Um, gives me my to-dos. Uh, I take daily photographs every day, progress photos of the job. There's about eight to ten every day that I take. So anything that changes on the job site, I'll snap a picture of it. At the end of the day, I'll label it and upload it. So um, not only that, it's got uh, daily logs. It's got to uh, view the schedule in here. So it's got a nice uh, color-coded schedule that shows everything from, like I said, breaking ground all the way to Energy Star verification, Builder Punch, you know, that all that is in here. Um, and it's all linked to the contractors. So the way I have it set up in the system is as soon as I change it, it automatically changes the rest of the schedule. And I hit email, and everyone is emailed about the change. So efficiency is way up as far as you know, people don't have dry runs out to the job site, show up, and it's not ready. Well, if I let them know, hey, the weather, you know, delayed this job by one day, you know, it moves it over and everybody's, everybody's on the same page. But not only that, there's a messaging center in here as well. So if somebody has a question about a job, they can message me in here. And, and it's all um, documented down the line. Our warranty process is phenomenal because it's all in here as well. As soon as I get any warranty call that comes in, say, hey, you know, my door the handle seems to be, you know, won't work properly or whatever. I can automatically tag the trim company to that, to that warranty and set up the day with them. And then as soon as it's done, it gets clicked off and checked in. So there's no paperwork involved in that. Um, but the nice thing about this system is, is you, you as a buyer would get your own login as well. So you would see all those daily photographs. You see a two-week color-coded outlook on the schedule. Um, 
the messaging center is in there for you as well. You can say, hey, I thought I was supposed to have an accent color paint on the wall there. And I could just say, yeah, that's, that's usually done at the end whenever we're doing the touch-ups, that kind of thing. So it's really easy, um, transparent system. So you, you don't feel like you're in the dark, like biting your nails, wondering what's happening as your home's getting built. It's all right there in front of you. Um, when I started 21 bit years ago, there was nothing like that on the market. It was all a spiral notebook, taking notes, making a ton of calls in the office. You know, you had to go walk all your jobs, and then come back to the office and make all the phone calls. And when you're making those phone calls, the guys you're calling are usually in the field working, so they check them in the evening and <laughs> get back with you the next day. And so, um, and building for 21 years, I've seen this progression. You know, we went from not having that to now we have Nextels. We can we can communicate with each other by the you know I don't know if any of you remember Nextels, yeah. And then of course the cell phone came out. Oh, nice flip open, pull up the antenna and talk on that, which was great. Um, but we were still, you know, we were still having to work off that spiral notebook. Still having to in our head, you know, come up with okay, this moved. It now. It, it dictates when this can start now, when that starts, when that, when that, when that, you know, you kind of got to go out. So I call it uh, um, like a two week train. So I, I run a two week train. So you can see what's happening within that two weeks. So if it derails, <clears throat> which it will, it seems to be my job is running around the train, fixing stuff as it's going down the road. So if it derails, it's only two weeks. You know, you can put it back on the track, call everybody, get that next two weeks going. Um, but as a builder, it's, it's, it's come a long way with this. Uh, and then we went from that, uh, working with, I worked with the 11th largest builder in the nation back in uh, Dallas, Texas. So they went into what they called a 16 week schedule. So it's four months basically um, to build a house. So we did it from 90 to 120 days, we built these houses, which was, blazing fast and they weren't they weren't like little cookie cutter homes either they were 3200 square foot all brick corian countertop nice nice homes but like i said they didn't change anything they did not change anything um, but they went from they went they went to this 16 week schedule which is really nice because they had these pdas i don't remember those that they handed out to all their builders and you can keep track of that 16 week schedule put it on this little cradle and hot sink it right into the to the main, the main uh, frame of the, the company there, so they can all keep a track on where their product is, uh, which is great, because I'm doing the same thing, but it's just me. So I'm keeping track of all, all the builds all at once um, with this program. It's called Builder Trend, and it's, it's, an, it's an amazing um, software that builders can use. So um, on top of that, uh, the the software also, um, it, has in, it has all of the documents loaded in there. All the contracts, all of the uh, construction documents as far as the, the floor plans, layouts, exterior layouts. Which So if somebody's on the job, instead of calling me and saying, hey, is this supposed to have corbels you know, at the, in the peaks? They can just pull up the exterior layout, punch on it. It's all approved, ready to go. And, and it's, it's so much easier for them, the communication is so much better with this program that, that we use. So that 21 years of building has been a, a progression. So I'm always on the lookout for something that's gonna help me keep track of, of the houses that we build. Now, um, 30 homes a year isn't, it's not all that much. Have you guys uh, been in any of our homes? Have you been to the parade of homes? You have, yeah, okay. Great, so you kind of know what product we're doing. So a lot of people, I tell them, yeah, yeah, we built that in six months, and they go, what? You know, it's award-winning, you know, 3,000 square foot home, but the reason why we're able to do that is because of systems like this. It's because um, I don't have a superintendent either. I have a quality control guy and an assistant superintendent um, just for eyes and ears out there for me if things go wrong and make sure everybody's got what they need, uh, but it's me. so. I've got a buck stop, stops here kind of attitude. Anything that happens on that job site, it's my fault. If it's right or wrong, hopefully it's right. 
hopefully it's right. Um, and I say that kind of, kind of, you know, hopefully it's right because my mantra is every house, every room, every day. So it's not like I just sit behind my counter and look at this going on and hope everything goes okay. I walk in every job, every house, every room. So as soon as I see something that is a little off track or off kilter from what we're trying to accomplish, my move is to, oh, I thought I had my back pocket. I take out this <laughs> and I call somebody. And then as soon as I call them and figure out where it needs to be, it's a couple of clicks in my schedule and it shifts and moves and communicates with everyone um, to get what we need, to get what we need. You had your hand up. Um, that I like? Okay. Um, I'd like to carry your loan and just take care of everything for you. Yep. I'll carry your loan. Um, uh, I'll do a construction loan of my own. That way you at the end would just have one time close. You just go and get a conventional loan and, and go for it. Um, does that work out for everybody? No. So some people are like, well, it's going to cost me a little less money. I know there's two closings involved, but I can get my own construction loan. Some people are like, they want to they get in the driver's seat and take care of all that themselves. Th that's fine. Um, but uh, I like it. It's just it's short and sweet. I can go get a loan for it. And so would I, I'm going to get pre approved. Do it well. With me? Um, <laughs> possibly. All right. So um, if I go to the bank, I get pre approved, and then I show the builder. Absolutely. Approval. You can talk to one of these ladies, too, over here. And then you carry based on that approval. Yes, sir. Ten percent. Yeah, we'll do ten percent. Yep, and we're off off to the races. So, and in the beginning processes too, like uh, that's a good segue into what I was going to talk about next. Is is um, when you're sitting down with that builder, um, if you came in and said, "Okay, Jason, I love your Bravo floor plan. Let's build that." It, that's great. So I can just go and permit it, and we, we can, you know, find the lot to put it on and go. Um, if we're going to modify those plans and put in that mother-in-law suite or push the back wall out or you don't want the curved thing on the ceiling or whatever the case may be, we do a plan revision where I send it back to my guy. He does his little adjustments in there. It takes about a week, week and a half, two weeks. We sit down at the table again, kind of go over it again, make sure everything is in the right spot. Because once we permit, I don't want to change anything else. You know, that's just, that's a major pain in the butt. But from that point, once permitting goes, we have a good start date. So um, like the closing date, it, it hinges primarily on that start date. So for a builder, that is the go, go time because that's when everything is, it's in my hands and I'm in the driver's seat at that point. Because um, once it's at the jurisdiction of the county, I'm pretty much just waiting on them to get their thing done. And um, then once it comes back out, we can get started on it. Um, and as far as loans go, yeah, we, we can work with whichever type of loan you, you want to work with. As long as you're pre-approved and everything is good to go, we go from that point. Yeah, and it's, it's easier for the buyer too. Um, like I said, you may, you may save a couple thousand dollars by getting your own construction loan, but that's a lot of work. It's, it's a lot of work. And it's, it's two closings too. Well, somebody can save a couple thousand dollars. Somebody that's into saving every little penny, that's, you know, uh, what's the saying? There's nothing more expensive than another man's money, right? So when you go for that loan, really depends on, and you can talk to, um, you know, like our preferred lender, I love working with them uh, as prime lending. So you can go down to prime lending, get a pre-approval, and he can show you all the different options of all the different homes, you know. Anything, what is it, two, 720, 725 is a jumbo loan. So anything below that, there's lots of different options on that. Um, he actually is offering tiny like a one percent or something like that for for prodigy buyers so uh, which is great that's good one percent can add up when you're talking you know seven hundred thousand dollars <laughs> so um next thing i kind of wanted to get into is choosing a builder because you know for, for this guy back here once you get your pre-approval you're wondering okay who do i go with um first thing is is go look at some houses right 
that's going to help you out a lot. When you go through the house, you can, get a, you can feel for it. I'm going to tell my wife, I don't, I don't buy any furniture on the internet. I just don't do it. I've got to sit in it. I've got to feel it. I've got to touch it. And homes are, are no different to me. Um, once you figure out three or four that you like, like, you know, uh, I like this builder, I like that builder, start setting up appointments. Go talk to them. Um, that's a very important step in somebody building your home. So um, let's say you're building with Ahur or Hayden. Are you going to meet the builder? No, you're not. Um, but in that semi-custom range, you're probably going to sit down with the guy that's building your house and, and talk to him about, about building that house. And ha you're going to have an interview with him. And, and it's kind of a two-way interview as well. I'm going to be straight up with you. Uh, because it's, it's a year and a half marriage, basically, between the builder and the buyer. It's going to take me about a half a year to build the house, and then I, I hold a full one year, actually it's a two year warranty on the, the mechanical side of things. Um, I have a one year warranty at the end of that, and then at, at the end of the process, um, at the end of that one year, it goes over to a two year mechanical warranty, and then a 10 year structural warranty that's through 210 warranty that we have. Um, but you're going to want to ask important questions to the builder, like first of all, like who's building my house, you know, do I get to meet them? What is the communication going to be like? Are you, am I going to have uh, communication along the way? Like back in Texas, we called the buyers once a week. We never met with them until the end. It was full, it was full production. So it was like they knew exactly what they were getting in the very beginning. Um, so you want to, as far as experience goes with the builder, I've always said it's not the amount of years you've been doing it. It's the amount of ha happy homeowners, happy closings that you've done. Like I said, I built over 450 homes now. I kind of know how to, how to build a house. Um, but you definitely want to know that you have a good rapport with that builder, ask important questions. Like I said, um, you know, how long have you been building? Can I see some of your product? Can I talk to some of your past clients and buyers? You know, that, that's another great question to ask. Um, also about the financing side of things, things like that. Um, you definitely want to ask those questions as well. Um, like I've always said, I'm not wearing them now, but when you go in to interview him, look at his boots. That'll tell you right there if he's walking job sites or not. If he's got some ratty, torn up boots, he's, he's on the job site. So um, that, that's pretty much, you know, I know this was a 50 minute class here or, or seminar. I kind of wanted to open it up to any any other questions you guys might have for for me? Sips. Sips. And I build with what? Sips. Sips. Yeah. S I P. They're all one package. Uh, actually, it's a house that's already on and put oh. together. No. No. He asked if I build with SIPs, and it sounds like it's it's more like a uh, like a um, a kit, like a. Oh yeah, but uh, uh, it, I I had both houses and designed houses, and uh, and what I do is uh, send my designs to a SIP builder. Oh okay. And uh, they build the house. And then I have to have it put together. Right, right. Just assembled, basically, at that point. Yeah. No, uh, we are what we call a stick builder. So yeah. foundation uh, sticks up. It, what the difference is, is that I can have R70 on the roof. Yeah, uh, that's, that's pretty amazing. So ours R is R49. It's pretty good, but R70 is talking about R values and insulation. And R45 in, in the floor. Mm -hmm. And you can't do that. No, we are, yeah, we are strictly a stick-built uh, operation right now. And we use 2x6 walls, 16 on center. They're not 2x4, they're not single wall. And that house I'm trying to sell is, is 8-inch wall. Yeah. Well, you can do, like, a uh, full ICF, too. And I'm not against doing an ICF, but I don't do ICF. And ICF block walls, I don't know if you guys are familiar with them. It's basically good concrete walls. They have these these kind of styrofoam form foundations and they pour the concrete all the way up and in. And it's a little tricky and there's a certain way to do it and the, the R value on those are amazing. 
Um, but we don't do those as well. Um, I've thought about doing those. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. Well, there's there's plenty of ways to achieve uh, super high R values on, on on the houses. I get what you're saying though. Yeah. Uh, so I I just ordered I had to just bought a uh, uh, I, my uh, I, a chair that uh, I, since I only have the left hand. All the chairs are right handed. <laughs> All of them? Yes. You're kidding me. So I got one that I Custom made. Yep. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. So I just wear a rolling. Mm-hmm. But it's different when I I looked at the and I go, Oh yeah, this is really good. When it comes in, it's different. <laughs> Well, and, and that's one of the things, you know, about doing like a modular home, yeah. uh, us being so semi-custom, we're constantly changing it. It just doesn't make us well, any sense. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Anybody else? Yes. Yes. Are you able to do smaller homes or maybe um, handicap accessible? Absolutely. Absolutely. We've, we've done ADA homes, um, full ADA homes, or just more handicap friendly homes. You know, if you just wanted to put in 3-0 doors or have the the cabinets with an open space in certain areas, things like that. Um, we also like to build um, slab foundations. So that way it's, it's a single level entrance into your house. There's no s steps going into your house. Um, same thing with the shower. Whenever we do our slab foundations, we're able to push the shower in. That way there's no curb at all to get into the shower. You just roll right in, things like that. Anybody else? You don't have a question, man? You got a question, don't you? <laughs> All right. Well, um, oh, he's got a lot of questions, I'm sure. Yes. I have one. We found a, a plan that we're considering, I think, got it off the internet. Mm -hmm. And you want to make a slight change to it, like get rid of the formal dining room and, and turn that into like a study. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that something we would need to go to a professional to have that redone, or could the builder do that? The builder can do that. He's usually going to outsource it to a designer. Um, some builders have in-house designers where they actually can, can do that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, you can bring it to a builder and say, yeah, we really love this plan. Or maybe you say, I like, I, I like this and this and this about the plan. You know, if you like three things about your plan and you're trying to change six things, you know, it just kind of makes more sense to, to, to start off with what you do need out of it rather than what you want to change about it. Because they may pull out a floor plan that you've never seen before and it's got exactly what you want and with some of those changes, maybe a little modification of what they want to do to it. Like if you were to look online on our website, you may see something that you like about one of these homes that, that, you're, that you found on yours and then you can pay just a nominal fee to modify that instead of starting from scratch and drawing a whole new floor plan. Like it's pretty it? it does. It's, it's running right now about $1.65, $1.80 a square foot. No, about $1.85, $1.95 a square foot. So you can average about two bucks a foot. Got a 3,000 square foot house, it's probably gonna cost you about $6,000 to have it designed, to draw it up. Versus if you were to go on my website and say, yeah, I like your Beethoven floor plan, and I wanna modify A, B, and C, it may cost you 800 to thousand dollars just to do those modifications so your website? Uh, my website I've got some cards I'm gonna leave at the table I've got some cards here that you guys can swing by and grab one and I'm going to be at the Century 21 booth they have a booth set up so I'll just leave these up here for you guys if you want to so you guys uh wondering if I can actually solve this You guys got a couple of minutes? All right. You want to mess it up? No. Come on. You want to mess it up? It's already messed up. All right. It's already messed up, right? Okay. Ready? So like I said, this is a uh, child's play compared to actually building a house. And all it is is knowing how it works and what the next step is 
on putting it together. Oh, come on, where are you at? There you are. Okay, got there. Ah, uh, um, current trends in home building right now, um, you know, we've kind of got our style as, as Prodigy Homes. We're kind of in the middle um, of, of a, like a modern, modern home. And like we take traditional plans, it's called transitional. So it's not the kind of modern homes that makes you feel like you're in a doctor's office and it's all, you know, uh, cold feeling. So what we do is we just kind of, we, um, do a take that original shell and we'll add cool lighting fixtures to it cool paint accent colors faux finishes things like that so to traditional. right um, it, it's it's what we call transitional so it's in between that full modern and that uh, uh when i say modern like that doctor's office kind of feel modern and then you're you know just reg regular old house kind of thing we're almost to the middle. Well, this is a little bit off the topic. Mm -hmm. but we're kind of torn between remodeling our old place or replacing it with a new one on the same lot. Right. We're kind of You're talking about just dozing the whole thing and just putting another one on the same lot? Yeah. That could get expensive. It's just a mobile phone. Oh, that's not very expensive. Just put the hitch on it. <laughs> and away she goes. Um, so where's your lot at? Does it have uh, so city water, util all the utilities there? We live there now. Okay, great. Beautiful. Okay. What sort of things should we bear in mind? Like what are the advantages of buying, building new versus trying to retrofit something? Um, Remodeling can get pricey, and the, the advantage, I say the full advantage of, of building new would be the fact that there's a, uh, a, a large warranty that's attached to it as well at the end. So it's, it's brand new, you have all the higher end, you don't have like copper in the walls, things like that. You have PEX lines, electricals all way up to current specs, inside and out from the ground up. That's why I tell buyers too, I, I don't do remodels. I don't even remodel my own houses. I, I don't do remodels at all, I'm too focused on building. But at the same time, you just never know what you're gonna find when you tear off that wall or you know that kind of thing. So it, it's it's kind of tough. Look, you got me all out of whack now. There you go. <laughs> I'm almost there. Getting closer. There it is. Uh-uh. And with that, we'll call it a day.